Did you feel it last night? Did you? That was an earthquake. But where is an earthquake? And why do we feel them? If we were to cut the earth open, like a piece of pie, we would find that it has many layers inside. The earth's crust is the outermost shell of the earth. It is hard and brittle and able to be cracked. This is where earthquakes occur. Normally we think of the Earth's crust as one big solid mass. But underneath that cr crust is an Earth's core that's creating a great deal of heat and pressure. When that pr pressure becomes too great on the crust, it starts to crack, creating what's known as a fracture. And if that pressure becomes even stronger, then along that crack, the crust will break, creating what's known as a fault line. A fault is where the crust breaks and earthquakes occur. When the earth breaks and moves, it releases energy in the form of seismic waves. There are two types of waves that travel long distances like the one we felt from the earthquake in Maine. The first type is the P wave, which stands for primary wave. Primary waves move a little bit like this. They're what is known as compressional waves. Notice how the land kind of squeezes and then gets pulled apart during a compressional wave. These are the fastest moving earthquake waves from the epicenter or the central point of an earthquake. The second type of wave is called an S wave, short for secondary wave. It moves a little slower than the P wave, but moves in a different form, going up and down. Because of this, these S waves tend to be more destructive than the primary waves are. The earthquake that happened last night was near Portland, Maine. That's roughly 90 miles between the earthquake and Burlington. Earthquakes happen quickly and without warning, but they're also rare in the state of Massachusetts. The earthquake that you felt last night was recorded as a 4.0 on the Richter scale, which is a scale from 1 to 10 that they use to measure the strength or magnitude of earthquakes. There have only been 19 earthquakes that have been a 5 or greater, just a little stronger than the earthquake that we had last night, which again was minor. Seismographs like this one are the tools that geologists use to measure earthquakes. They're very sensitive pieces of equipment, which is why the seismograph here is kept inside this box. When vibrations pass through the ground, the long green arm sways up and down, recording the motion of the earthquake as it passes through. Our seismograph works with the help of an electromagnet seen here. The magnet, when moved, causes a current to move through the wire, down the cord, and into the recording program here on this computer. You can see the kick that I just made caused this big giant spike to form uh, on our seismograph. While earthquakes are rare here, there are some places on Earth where they can be quite common. Do you know where? Learn more by searching the web for USGS, the United States Geologic Survey. They are the government agency responsible for observing and recording earthquakes in the U.S. and worldwide. They even have an earthquake website for kids. This is Mr. Musselman with the Burlington Science Center signing off. Have a great day.